Hello, my name is Sukanya Miles Watson and I'm a member of the student support and development team at St. Aidan's College. I wanted to talk to you today about panic attacks uh, so, uh, and to talk a bit about coping strategies as well. Um, so what, what I'll do first is to talk you through a case study. Um, this case study is really both for self-awareness and also to help you if you are supporting a friend who is uh, experiencing a panic attack. So uh, you get a knock on your door, it's your friend outside who's looking very distressed in floods of tears, gasping for breath. Um, they, 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 feel, they say to you that they feel they're going to pass out. Uh, they describe feeling lightheaded and are worryingly experiencing chest pains. Um, they're obviously due to start an exam and are very worried about what to do next. So, of course, the first thing is to um, ensure that they uh, have a, you know, find them a quiet space to sit down since they're feeling lightheaded and then to check with NHS 111 if they're, uh, if what they're experiencing is um, a result of a panic attack or if it is, um, if there is any other underlying serious medical uh, reason for it. Uh, you also check if they've, you know, taken any substances, if they're allergic to something, or if they've got a pre-existing cardiac or, um, um, you know, or, or if they're asthmatic. So just checking for those things and being able to communicate that with, um, with the NHS 111 or GP, just to get some advice. Well, panic attacks um, do happen and... Um, you know, a lot, a lot of us and most of us really experience anxiety at some point in our lives. Uh, for some of us, it's those sleepless nights before the big exam, whereas for others, it's a more frequent experience. If anxiety builds up for a long time, uh, it can result in a panic attack. So, um, and this panic attack can have real, you know, psychological and physical symptoms. And some of the symptoms described in that case study is, is common, are, are common to um, a, a panic attack. So um, what is a panic attack? It's, it's basically an exaggerated response. Um, uh, uh, it, you know, the body responds um, um, to stress or fear and it's an, it's an exaggerated response and it really it manifests in, in these physical symptoms. So you could have, you could experience a pounding heartbeat. Some people experience clammy hands and uh, sweating. Uh, you could be feeling nauseous. Um, you could experience chest pains and, and all of these symptoms um, are very frightening and, and scary at the time uh, of the panic attack. So uh, you, you also sometimes uh, people feel disconnected from their body and, um, and also are unable to breathe. So there's labored breathing. So how, what do we do to manage that? And how do we calm somebody down and, and um, get them to um, realize that this is a panic attack. It, it will have no lasting physical uh, harm uh, there's obviously psychological uh, effects and, and the fear that it will happen again. So um, I'll, I'll give you some tips in terms of what, what to do in terms of when experiencing the panic attack or when you're supporting someone undergoing that experience. And then uh, once that has passed, one needs to then get signpost um, individuals to the right support, you know, GP counselling service, come and talk to college staff if you've missed an exam, etc. So there are obvious triggers in, in, the, in, the, in, in the case of the case study, obviously there are exams uh, and exams can be a great cause of stress. Um, I know we, we, we have all these messages about looking after uh, oneself during exams to the build up of an exam, um, you know, healthy eating, getting enough rest and breaks and sleeping enough, but we often forget to do that when, when, when we're in the middle of sort of revising and so focused on, on the exam itself. Um, so do watch out for triggers. It's obviously, it's always best to avoid caffeine or energy drinks, uh, stimulants, uh, because they can trigger panic attacks as well. So what you'll find is that um, during an attack, um, you know, people ha have very shallow, shallow and uh, quick breaths. They, the, the breathing is affected. And 
the first thing to do is to try and calm that down, to calm, to slow down uh, one's uh, breathing. So um, the trick is to try and breathe calmly in through the nose and out through the mouth. And you repeat that until you feel calm. So it's often helpful also to count. So you count to five with each in breath, and then you count to five with each out breath. And you keep doing that. And it takes a little bit of practice, but you know, uh, if, if, if you experience multiple panic attacks or if you're worried about experiencing it, it's, it's uh, the possibility of it. It's always good to have these tools and to know what to do. Uh, the important thing is also not to fight it, to just, you know, let, let it, you know, best not to question why did this happen? You know, why is it happening to me? Just reassure yourself that it will be okay. Most panic attacks don't last longer than 10 minutes. Um, and it's important to sort of reassure yourself, keep telling yourself this will pass, it will be okay. Right, so focus on breathing, reassuring yourself. Um, observe how you're feeling, don't fight it. And also shift your focus, try and uh, think, um, think some comforting thoughts, you know, it could be calming music, it could be lots of different things. And I'll talk you through some grounding techniques in a second. So um, moving on to the next slide, um, I've got some list of resources, but that's really for after the event. In terms of physical grounding techniques, it's really, again, focus on the breathing. Um, grab on tightly. If you're feeling dizzy or lightheaded, sit down, find somewhere to sit and clutch or hold something physical or solid just to, you know, um, remind yourself of where you are. And this is very helpful when you feel disconnected. Um, touch different objects. It could be a pen or, or a key. The sensation of it can bring you back to the present moment. Dig your heels into the ground. Feel yourself grounded, that you're connected and or your feet, that helps again to bring you back. You can carry a grounding object, so it could be a stone. My daughter carries a stone around in her pocket, something that's familiar and comforting, and that would be, that's helpful. Uh, stretch, stretching. Um, stretch, extending your arms and fingers out to release the tension from your body because you're, it's, you're all wound up and, and, and stressed and clench and release your fists. And if you can, if, you, if you're near a, a washroom, run some cool or warm water over your hands or splash it on your face. So some of these things can help. Again, it's, it's working out what, what works for you uh, and what's helpful for you. I mean, throughout uh, the Stressless campaign that we are running on social media uh, alongside the JCR welfare team. So we've got lots of handy tips on there in terms of taking breaks, in terms of grounding techniques, in terms of breathing exercises, in terms of just, you know, going for a walk, uh, looking after yourself really during this very stressful time. If you have any questions, queries, um, get in touch with us. And uh, Kate's gonna do a separate video around SAC forms and exam deferrals, which is useful as well. And Joe's done uh, some great videos around, you know, looking after yourself. Uh, during this period. So stay safe and good luck with the exams.